Hello. I am an expert opinion leader. Okay. Adiposopathy is confusing. Fat tissue cannot be diseased. Adipose tissue is a grouping of adipocytes, mesenchymal cells, fibroblasts, preadipocytes, endothelial precursor cells, smooth muscle cells, collagen, nerve cells, blood vessels, blood cells and immune cells, whose biological processes are important for human health, and whose dysfunction contributes to metabolic disease. Adiposopathy is confusing. Fat tissue is an inert organ, and cannot be diseased. Adipose tissue is an active endocrine and immune organ. Adiposopathy is confusing. Fat tissue cannot be diseased. Adiposopathy, or sick fat, is defined as anatomical, structural, and functional abnormalities of adipocytes, and adipose tissue that may lead to metabolic disease. Adiposopathy is confusing. Fat tissue cannot be diseased. Adiposopathy is analogous to the pathos of other body tissues, such as cardiomyopathy, myopathy, encephalopathy, ophthalmopathy, retinopathy, enteropathy, nephropathy, neuropathy, and dermopathy. Adiposopathy is confusing. Diseased cells and tissues must have anatomic abnormalities. Adiposopathy is anatomically manifest by adipocyte hypertrophy, visceral fat accumulation, periorgan fat accumulation, and fat infiltration in non-adipose organs, such as liver, muscle, and pancreas. Adiposopathy is confusing. Diseased cells and tissues must have structural abnormalities. Adiposopathy is structurally manifest by extracellular matrix abnormalities and impaired vascular supply. Adiposopathy is confusing. Diseased cells and tissues must have functional abnormalities. Adiposopathy is functionally manifest by endoplasmic reticulum dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction, and oxidative dysfunction leading to endocrine and immune derangements. Adiposopathy is confusing. Diseased cells and tissues must have a cause. Adiposopathy is caused by positive caloric balance, unhealthy nutrition, and sedentary lifestyle when it occurs in genetically and environmentally susceptible individuals, and is exacerbated by limited or impaired adipogenesis and peripheral subcutaneous adipose tissue. I am an opinion leader. I object to adiposopathy. Oh my! Arthur Schopenhauer once said, all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. Adiposopathy is confusing. Not everyone who is overweight has metabolic disease, and not everyone with metabolic disease is overweight. If increased weight gain results in adiposopathy, then even mild fat gain can contribute to metabolic disease, as often occurs with Asians. If adiposity does not result in adiposopathy, then fat weight gain may not contribute to metabolic disease, as occurs in patients with benign, multiple, symmetric, lipomatosis. Similarly, an increase in functional fat cells is an important mechanism as to how PPAR gamma agents improve metabolic disease. Conversely, weight loss with antiretrovirals may worsen metabolic disease, due to HIV lipodystrophy. Adiposopathy is confusing. The adipocentric paradigm ignores the importance of other body organs in the pathogenesis of metabolic diseases such as diabetes mellitus, high blood pressure, and dyslipidemia. If during positive caloric balance, adiposopathic endocrine and immune disturbances occur, then whether or not such derangements result in metabolic disease depends on interactions with body organs such as the liver, muscle, pancreas, as well as other body systems. I am an opinion leader. Are you suggesting that I revise my thinking and take the time to revise my prepared slides towards a broader understanding of the role of adipose tissue in human disease? Oh my! Tolstoy once said, I know that most men, 
including those at ease with problems of the greatest complexity, can seldom accept even the simplest and most obvious truth if it be such as would oblige them to admit the falsity of conclusions which they have delighted in explaining to colleagues, which they have proudly taught to others, and which they have woven, thread by thread, into the fabric of their lives. Adiposopathy detracts from the essential message that too much fat is a problem of poor personal behavior, which requires changes in lifestyle and not administration of drugs. Medical science has not historically withheld drugs for disorders due to unfavorable lifestyle activity, such as lung disease from smoking or venereal diseases. It is true that excessive body fat is unique because eating is necessary for survival. But conceptually, syphilis was once an epidemic and one of the leading causes of morbidity and mortality. Yet researchers did not stop the development of effective antibiotics, nor did clinicians withhold penicillin from patients with syphilis. Adiposopathy impairs the ability of clinicians to logically explain why overweight patients should lose weight. Explaining to patients how fat weight gain often causes fat to become sick, and how fat weight loss may cause fat to become more healthy may prove to be more productive than discussing the individual diagnostic components defining the metabolic syndrome. I am an opinion leader. It is not clinically important to know when adiposopathy or sick fat is present, because overweight and obese patients should just lose weight. Being overweight or obese is an epidemic, as are the metabolic consequences. Medical science has an historic bias against obese patients. I am an opinion leader. As long as I deny that increased fat can be a true disease, then anti-obesity drugs will not be developed. Being overweight or obese is an epidemic, as are the metabolic consequences. Medical science has an historic bias against obese patients. I am an opinion leader. Because I have no experience in anti-obesity drug development, I am unbiased in my opinion that no new anti-obesity drugs should be approved. Those engaged in drug research often have advantageous perspectives regarding the risks and benefits of drugs, compared with those with no such experience. I am an opinion leader. Unless an anti-obesity drug has no adverse side effects, it should not be approved. This same standard does not apply to other diseases and reflects a bias against overweight and obese patients. I am an opinion leader. Currently, only one anti-obesity drug is approved for long-term weight loss. Being overweight or obese is epidemic. Due to the critical need, if a new anti-obesity drug were approved, it would be highly prescribed which is an important reason not to approve any new anti-obesity drugs. This same standard does not apply to other diseases and reflects a bias against overweight and obese patients. I am an opinion leader. If novel anti-obesity drugs were approved, they may be widely prescribed off-label. Therefore, in order to protect those who don't need these drugs from off-label use, it is best to withhold drugs from everyone, including patients who may benefit from them. This same standard does not apply to other diseases and reflects a bias against overweight and obese patients. I am an opinion leader. I hate pharmaceutical companies. The refusal to approve new anti-obesity drugs suggests that, for the first time in history, medical science has decided that a major epidemic is not treatable with drug therapy. I am an opinion leader. Taking the time to learn the pathogenic potential of adipose tissue and all the mechanisms involved in adiposopathy would require years. Also, since I disapprove of anti-obesity drug treatment, I do not need to know when adiposity is truly a disease, as is reflected by the term adiposopathy. Oh my! Max Planck once said, a new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die, and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. Thank you for explaining this to me. Adiposopathy is so simple and so obvious that I have changed my mind. I will leave you with a quote. Marcus Aurelius once said, The object of life is not to be on the side of the majority, 
but to escape finding oneself in the ranks of the insane. Good day.